What's up, guys? Definitely not supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah. Morning, guys. Um, <laughs> that bit where I tumbled over was utterly taken down. I mean, that was a straight red. That was a straight red card in football. Wilson took me out. <laughs> um, anyway, today I want to talk about the. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen it by now. The McLaren 2050 concept. If you haven't seen it yet, watch this little clip whilst I run home and jump in the shower. Our design concept is the MCLE, an electric car designed around giving the fans a stake in a spectacle by exposing them to the driver's skills, endeavor, and emotions. Our vision is to take the human machine interface to the extreme. On the machine side, it is about embracing the zero emission journey with no compromise on power, efficiency and driving experience. We do hope motorsport will evolve in order to increase the accessibility to new people, new places and new cultures and we will work together with our engineers to develop the technology to get the fans closer and closer to the race event and to the spectacle. And we believe, with no doubt, that there are many possible futures for motorsport. What do you think? Right, well, that was a really quick run back, wasn't it? <laughs> um, right, well, you've seen the video. I showed you just the end of the video there because the whole video is six minutes long, but the last little bit there shows you the car from lots of different angles. It shows you the type of circuit that they envision Formula One racing on, and it talks a little bit about their vision. Um, to give you a, a bit more of an overall concept, they're talking about, this is their vision of, a, of what, 20, what Formula One will look like in 2050. So 31 years from now, that's, that's Formula One's centenary year. Uh, what they think the cars will look like, the technology, how the drivers will interact and fans will interact with each other, what the circuits will look like as well. Um, they're talking about this car, which looks striking, doesn't it? It looks hugely futuristic, but interestingly, still kind of open wheel, four open wheels, uh, driver stuck in the middle of a, of a cockpit of a chassis, um, still got front and rear wings, um, rear wheel drive as they say, fully electric. Um, the stats that they predict around this are uh, quite striking. They say that it will do over 300 miles an hour um, from a, a fully electric uh, battery power source or energy source. Uh, foldable battery that will fit in around the aerodynamics of the car, the shape of the car. And interesting, the aerodynamics that are shape-shifting, um, so active aerodynamics where the side pods will expand and contract at different points in the circuit, narrowing down to like a bullet shape as it goes down the straight to give you that 500 kilometer an hour top speed that they, uh, they predict. Um, the, uh, the car will have a driver in the middle of a cockpit which is transparent to give more access to fans to be able to see what's going on and also he'll have a co-pilot pilot, but not a human co-pilot an AI artificial intelligence co-pilot which will learn from him or her from the drivers uh, which will have been trained over time using esports races uh, to, to run simulations in advance to help with that as well and it will help the driver to make decisions on the fly so it'll be less interaction from the pit wall and much more focus on the driver and the tools that he has uh, around him in the cockpit. His emotions, the driver's emotions, uh, will be displayed on the outside surfaces of the car. So if he's angry, if he's frustrated at, at what's going on in front of him, he's being held up, maybe the car will start to glow red to show his emotional experience inside the cockpit. So a completely different way of looking at how fans and, and drivers and teams interact and share that experience in a different way. Um, there was lots of talk about the circuit. The circuit, you saw an image of it in the end of the video there, 
hugely futuristic kind of twisting, heavily steeped banking uh, around the track that goes up and down almost like a roller coaster. Um, grandstands that have got clear, uh, transparent ceilings and roofs and floors to be able to watch the cars pass under and over you. So, uh, you know, a really interesting, I mean, hugely fantasy based uh, and hugely futuristic vision from McLaren of what 2050 will look like in terms of Formula One. So I'd love to know, first of all, what you think of that, of course, what are your opinions on what it looks like? Um, let's, let's talk about firstly how they came to this this, uh, this concept, how they came up with this idea. They say that they have interacted with fans, they've canvassed fans, um, they have spoken to lots of people within the McLaren organisation, engineers, strategists, drivers, uh, esports racers, the, the whole array of intellect and, uh, and, and resource that they can tap into from the McLaren organisation, of course. They, have, they think they've, they've utilised all of that expanded on the technologies that are emerging right now, looked into the future at what legislation around electric vehicles might be, the, the direction that's heading, for example, um, looked at what fans want, what do they really want out of motor racing, and this is what they've put the whole lot together, this is what they've come up with. I think it's interesting. I think it's really interesting. I mean, I love the look of it. Look, it looks great, doesn't it? It looks like a, I mean, it looks futuristic, which is what it should look like. I think it's uh, that's exciting, it's great, it's nice to dream about stuff like that. Um, then the question comes, well, and I know lots of you have already asked me this on Twitter and, and so on, why? Why on earth have McLaren done this? This is a McLaren Applied Technologies, it's not the race team, this is a separate arm that looks into futuristic tech, futuristic materials, uh, ways of using Formula One's kind of um, experience and expertise and putting it into other industries, that kind of thing. I did a video on that. Uh, which I'll link at the end last year as well. So MAT, McLaren Applied Technologies, have done this. Why have they done it? Because they must have spent a huge amount of money. I imagine there's an agency that's been paid a fortune to come up with this concept along with them. Um, why have they done it? Well, look, two reasons. I mean, one reason is that it's been great exposure and it will be great exposure for them and for all of their partners. Uh, it comes no, it comes as no surprise is when you read the article that goes along with the with the um, the video there. They name check. There's little. There's names of sponsors being dropped in all the time. They have heavily plugged their McLaren Shadow esports program, HTC, uh, a McLaren sponsor, in terms of the way that fans will interact. So there's lots of exposure for their partners, which generates some value for them. And it's a sensible thing to do, isn't it? Lots of people are going to see this. Lots of people are going to be talking about it. And in all of the pictures, the McLaren sponsors and logos are all over this futuristic machine all over the driver's overalls, which by the way will be a full G-suit to cope with those uh, astonishing speeds that they'll be able to uh, to see in 2050. So that's one of the reasons because like with anything they have to do, it's got a business reason to it. It's got to generate some value for partners. It drives value for what McLaren can then charge their sponsors for joining the, the, the programme. They're not just joining the Formula One team, they're joining the McLaren group and things like this increase that uh, that brand exposure. So that's one thing. The other thing, and this is for me the most important thing and why I like this so much, is that this is about dreaming, isn't it? It's about dreaming of what the future might be. This is just fantasy based. I know they've done a lot of research into this, but there is no concrete evidence to suggest anything like this will actually happen in 2050. But that doesn't matter. That does not matter at all because it's given us all a little bit of escapism, a little bit of a chance to discuss the future of Formula One in, in total unrestricted dream terms. It gives us that opportunity to throw away anything we know, any concepts we know, any traditions that we know if we want to, uh, anything that holds us back within the current era of Formula One. You know, are we going to be able to get all the teams to agree to it? None of that matters. Is the governing body going to go for it? Is the, the, the circuit going to be safe enough? Are, you know, are we going to have enough escape roads in this particular circuit that seems to be in a city centre as well? It doesn't matter. Those details, they're not important in this. This is about dreaming. And dreaming is really, really important when it comes to anything in life, but particularly when we've got something like, like we've got in Formula One. I always say to people when you're looking into the future, because it's so hard, isn't it, to predict the future, to look at what, even just to imagine what the future might be. I mean, think of yourself. What, what will you be doing in 30 years from now? What will your life look like? What will the life, the world around you look like in, in 2050? 
I mean, the truth is we have no idea. And it's really hard to imagine that. If I say to you, go back 30 years, think about what life was like 30 years ago for you or for your parents or for your grandparents or whatever it might be. You know, no such thing as mobile phones, for example. They didn't exist. You know, the technology we all take for granted now, that didn't exist. So it's really easy to see how far we've come from 30 years in the past to right here today because it's tangible, there's evidence to show what a giant leap we've taken. So when you look at something like this, that at the moment looks ridiculous almost. I mean, that circuit design that they've, they've uh, put in that graphic there, I mean, if they started building that today, I'd be amazed if it's ready by 2050. It's enormous and it goes over city centre streets and in and out of buildings and, you know, it's just a dream. But in 30 years time, 31 years time, I mean, who knows? Who's to say it won't look like that? Who's to say that Formula One won't be doing 300 miles an hour safely? That they won't be, uh, you know, pulling off the racing line to dynamically, wirelessly charge their electric racing car by pulling through the pit lane? Who's to say that the car won't be completely changing shape as it comes off a corner onto a straight? Nobody can say that that won't be happening because we don't know. And the fact that McLaren have done this, I think, generates a great discussion. It allows us to talk openly about the future of motorsport. And to be honest, all right, 2050 may be a little bit far down the line, but you don't have to come very far back from that to start really thinking about the future. You know, maybe it's 20 years from now, maybe it's 10, 15, 20 years from now. Those discussions actually really should be happening now about what happens with the future of motorsport. Which direction are we gonna go in? Things like this just allow us to have something to grasp onto. We've all got to have a dream, we've all got to have a vision, we've all got to have something to look forward to into the future, to cling on to and say, that would be amazing if that happened. How good would that be? So I take my hat off to McLaren. I think it's great that they've done this. I really appreciate the fact that they've put an awful lot of time, effort and resource probably into this. And I know they've got business reasons, as I said, to do it. But from a fan perspective, from anybody who has any interest in Formula One or the future of Formula One, if you're a kid, you know, 10 years old right now that may have never had Formula One on its radar and you see that, well, that, that's the sort of thing that makes your ears prick up make sure I stick out on stalks. That's the sort of thing you want. You want a poster of that car up on your bedroom wall. When I was a kid, I was watching Formula One when I was just this tall. I was watching it as my dad was watching it. I'd walk into the room, I'd see these cars on the screen. I'd look at old footage when there were programs around about Formula One and it would show, you know, six wheeled racing cars, cars with giant fans on the back that would suck them down to the racetrack. Um, you know, incredible stuff, incredible innovation. And for me, that was what absolutely piqued my imagination and probably led on to me, you know, having this dream of becoming an engineer in the world of Formula One. And at that point, that dream for me was, was ridiculous. It was totally unobtainable. That was like me wanting to be an astronaut or a professional footballer or a pop star or something. It was so far out of reach. It was a joke by, I kind of, that's the thing that I dreamt of, you know, in the future, I just wonder if I could be one of those guys running out of the pit garages with all the gear on, changing the wheels and tyres in that staggering short space of time. That's those, I remember having those thoughts. So that was my dream and I kind of chased it and, and eventually, you know, got hooked on Formula One and motorsport and, and that, you know, that hook, the thing that got me in and got me to follow that dream and chase it and ultimately bring it to, to life was the fact that I was seeing these remarkable, unbelievable pieces of innovation, of engineering on my TV screens. So I just wonder if what McLaren have done here, if these kind of images, if these kind of images are up on the posters, uh, are up on the bedroom walls as posters of, of kids of today, will that be the thing that plants a seed in their mind that says, I wanna do that, I wanna be part of that future of motorsport. That vision is my vision and I wanna be part of it. So well done McLaren, we've got to have dreams, everybody's got to have dreams. Um, if you don't have dreams, you're faced with nothing but reality. And reality sometimes can be a bit suppressing, can't it? It can be a bit overwhelming at times, we've all had that. So at some point you've got to have a way to escape reality, have a bit of fantasy, have a bit of dreaming, 
bit of imagination kicking in. That's exactly what they've done here. Um, I hope you like it. Let me know what you think anyway. Do you think it's a, a, a good concept? Do you think it's ridiculous, stupid, a waste of time? Uh, do you think it's brilliant? Do you think it's thought inspiring? Do you think it could be reality? Um, you know, let me know. Let me know your thoughts on it, as I know you always will. Uh, that's it, though, for me for this week, guys. I hope you have a great weekend, whatever it is you're up to. Don't forget to get questions coming in for Monday's Ask Elvis. Use the hashtag uh, Ask Elvis. Um, it's been a good week, I think. I hope. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. It's been quite a varied amount of content this week. So uh, thank you for everybody who's taken the time to comment. Um, lots of you have this week. I really appreciate it. So have a great weekend, and let's do it all again next time. Ta-da.